um, shout out to Anthony, well, shout out to Rock for his event, and if you ever wish him happy birthday, send him a big booty hoe, <laughs> money, or Henny, you're a fucking dub. Uh, but shout out to Anthony Lawrence, Mahogany Connections for the capital of New York State Black Expo, Saturday, November 10th. They're now looking for sponsors at the Albany Capital Center, 55 Eagle Street, Albany, New York, 12207. For more information, go to www.cnysblackexpo.com. Two more. There's two more. Sorry, guys. Upper Class Volume 1 Take Over, their 50th show. We got Conceded Show, Corey J, Ace Carter, Rusi, LeBron, Tommy Versailles, AB, Jayam, and more. August 14th, doors open at 7, show starts at 8 at the Star Bar. Hey, we were there yesterday. 214 Star Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11237. Hit Vedana Alexander for more information on the tickets. And finally, Busy B will be live Thursday, August 30th at Rome. 85 Avenue A, New York, New York, 10009. And by the way, congratulations, Busy B, on being a dad again. And that is it for my announcements. Holy, that hurts. <laughs> so I'm here with my TV Gold. She came all the way from Jersey. That's yep. dedication, bro. Yep. So how long have you been doing this? Um, let's go for... Damn. Let's go for like seven years. Jesus, but you're like what, 21? <laughs> I look 21. You're very 21. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'm actually 28. I'm 29 in two weeks. God bless you. So what are we doing for your birthday? I have no idea. Everybody keeps asking me and I literally don't know. I physically don't know. I usually have my mom. Like, like mom, can you just cook me like my favorite meals? And it's like, I, I do the same thing. I say, yeah. like, take your guitar, have a Woodstock moment, Ooh. light up, and play guitar in the middle of a park, and we're good. You know what's crazy? Somebody asked me if I wanted to like do an event that weekend, and I told them like I don't like performing on my birthday. Because to me, performing is work, and I don't want to work. But let me ask you a question, though. Would mm -hmm. it really be kind of work if you're sitting and you're really celebrating in a way? Because it's another year of your life. I mean, yes, but usually like when it comes to like just a public performance display of any kind like in my head i'm like rehearsing for it non-stop so to me it's work like i'm, I'm just when it's music I'm, i just feel like i'm always in work mode so you don't actually play just to play for yourself mm, yeah unless i'm drunk <laughs> unless i'm drunk i'll just pick it up and i'll bullshit yeah i've written some pretty cool songs I gotta, I gotta look at the, the phone for these lyrics. <laughs> but, um, no, but here's the thing, like, I, I, I became a photographer also, mm -hmm. my passion. But, yeah. You know, I still pick up the camera when I want to just go around and shoot, because I gotta remember, yeah. it's still something I love. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't you feel like sometimes when you're stressed, you just want to play and play and play? Um, I do. I definitely do, but... I don't, I don't think I do it consciously, I just kind of do it out of a necessity. So to me, like, doing it for my birthday is consciously choosing to do it that day versus, damn, I'm just so fucking stressed out, I need to do something to, like, believe it. If it does that make sense? No, it does. I would, yeah. just, I would just say, but don't think of it as an actual appointment. Mm -hmm. Because if, let's say, it's your friend and I just randomly show up to Jersey. Yeah. Because it's your birthday. <laughs> and, um... Uh, you're just playing, just to play. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever had those moments. <coughs> I'm so, like... Maybe this is why I'm so stressed the fuck out. Because I'm just working too damn much. No. It might help you. Yeah. yeah, but no, we can't ruin really that beautiful boy. Yeah, that's true. That's, usually, that's really the main reason why. Yeah. Global health. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't listen to me. I'm a bad example. It's all gravy. We all have our vices. Yeah. So seven years. Mm-hmm. That seven years, how did it start? Oh, let me see. How did it start? I don't know. I have always been, like, 
I would always kind of like mess around just like singing randomly I would ha I had this one friend in high school and it was just like one day we were in the library and I was just like I had my headphones in and I was just kind of like singing along to something but I wasn't really thinking about it and she was just like god meth okay we get it you can sing <laughs> I'm like really I can sing <laughs> and it just kind of went from there and I had signed up for this talent show like my senior year okay. and I told absolutely nobody about it because okay. I was just like that nervous but mind you this talent show was in front of like 500 people I think I, no it was my high school was pretty big so like the amount of contestants plus their families it was like 500 people in that audience so like my first performance that almost nobody knows about was in front of 500 people and I did it a cappella, scared shitless. So no guitar? No guitar, I, I didn't play guitar until later. later. I think I've only been playing guitar for about four years-ish. How did you end up getting into guitar? I got into guitar because I started working with a guitarist, but he was one of those people that's like super talented but super lazy. People. Yeah, like just like natural skill and ability, and it's just like, oh, I wish I could do that. But he has a way just guitar. super there. Yeah, You're it is. Lazy. Why? He's super lazy, and it just came to a point where it's like I can't rely on you, but I still want to make original music without having to rely on a beat. Yeah. So it's just like, all right, then I just have to learn myself. So it just, it just came in like that. So before you were doing it, before you learned, how did you do it if you didn't want to be with a beat? did it with a beat no holy shit this is like digging so deep into the music past it's all a blur welcome to Monday Night Raw with me oh people think. god yeah you're really making me think all right I've done my job guys yeah pretty much I think I used to just do mostly covers it would just be like cover songs then so but you would do it all on cappella then because you didn't have the beat or you used like the instrumental I would use the instrumental it was like a mixture of the two. My first performance, if I was like 17, that song was a cappella only because I couldn't find an instrumental that went with my voice because my voice is a little bit higher and the original song was like super low. Yeah. So I did that a cappella. And then from there, it was just like a series of cover songs. And then I had went to school and I minored in music where I came across the guitarist that was just a voice minor. And as a voice minor, I'd rely on an instrumentalist as my like my background so I wouldn't be playing an instrument but I would just be singing yeah. so like through school I met this awesome guitarist I'm just like oh my god you're so late you're so talented tried working with him and we did like maybe one or two shows but we could have did so much more if he wasn't so 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 lazy and it, it kind of blossomed from there yeah yeah did you play any other instruments? I have a piano and I have a ukulele. I I understand how to play them, but I don't play them well. Yeah. I'm sorry. I love when people talk about ukulele because yeah. it makes remind me of the, the old days, like you no. watch the old shows, mm, and they yeah. would always be singing along like the the campfire songs. And yeah. This is a very sort of nostalgic feel to it, but I never pick it up. It's like somewhere in my basement. And like I have like a small media room, or at least I call it a media room in my basement, where I just record and yeah, I just I like to like brainstorm and come up with like uh, scratch vocals for future projects that I want to work on. But I have like hooks on the walls for like my guitars and stuff, and I just have the ukulele there. Yeah. So how would you describe your sound? How would I describe my sound? I know how other people describe it, and I know how I want to describe it. Well, if you have to categorize it into your own genre, that's not in the genre list. That's not in the genre list. So that's the ratchet. What? Yeah. I know, it's counterintuitive compared to uh, my EP that I just put out. Are you sure you consider yourself ratchet? Sophista Ratchet, there's a difference. Sophista Ratchet. Sophista Ratchet. Okay, now you gotta explain that. Damn. You know what, honestly, the best way to explain it is later on when I perform. Okay, no, no, no. I gotta, we need like a little bit of an explanation to what the Fister Ratchet is. So Fister Ratchet is 
when you're bougie but you ratchet too just a little bit you know just a little bit you can't being bougie is it's a lot of effort it's a lot of energy you can't do it all the time you gotta find a balance to this direction you see i don't see you in even ratchet i know, you know. that's the, the sophisticated side <laughs> The sophisticated. You, I swear, you <laughs> got so much. Re- I have so much respect for her right now. No. <laughs> that is, I'm not gonna lie. Out yeah. of everyone that's given me answers for this, this is the most creative I've ever heard. Thank you. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> I know. You, you've also performed in different languages. I. Uh, yeah, when I was in school and I minored in music, I started off as a classical singer. So, so you took the Stavatrix in Italian, Latin, French, and German? I can read it. Could I understand it and know what I was saying? No. That's that's the beauty of it. Like, we would learn how to pronounce uh, words in that language, like the rules of the letters and how they're arranged, mm-hmm. but to actually know what you're saying and know it fluently, like, that wasn't a thing. You have to Google the lyrics. So they just made you randomly sing shit you don't know, so they could be telling you to go fuck yourself in the language you wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, you'd know after. You just, you just have to look up the translation and shit. What kind of school is this? I mean, I think that's just like the beginner part of any classical program. Like, you learn it in different languages because it's supposed to, like, broaden your horizons and you plan to go into that field of classical singing and like prepares you for what's to come. So do you feel like that actually helped you in developing your skills? Or do you feel like you could have done without learning all these things? I probably could have done without learning, but I don't regret that I have that knowledge. Because a lot of it, it just, it plays into just basic technical mechanics of singing. It's not just opening your mouth and singing, but like, I understand how like my vocals work. I understand how my mouth is supposed to be physically in the back of my throat in order to like reach a certain sound. Like I know how I'm su- physically supposed to be in order to sing at my best. Okay. So it's like almost scientific to a sense, in a sense. I mean, I can see music being a little scientific in, yeah. a, in a way because you have the way you compose it is the way like a formula. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And you're also a creative director. Yeah, I am. Wow, you're on my website. Well, I had this all in my head, but I also have my questions right here. Oh, true that, true that. Um, yeah, there's this brand called Mattel. It's a man. It's a men's accessory line that I come up with uh, these kind of concepts for new pieces and things of that nature. How did you end up involved in that though? I created it. So you're a director, but you created the whole mm-hmm. brand. Yep. So would you be the founder? I yeah, I would be, but I put myself as creative director. You just don't want to be that. Bo- you don't want the bougie title. Is that what it is? Yeah. You know, it's just I'm being humble for the people. It's a bit the bougie. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But um, no, I I personally really like menswear like I like how I like how well dressed a man can be and that's always interests me and yeah I know in the fashion industry like deep into it you'll always find like a man that has always made clothing for women or pieces for women like that's like super common but I have yet to really see that a woman leading a men's brand like she's a woman that makes things specifically for men versus you have like your Michael Kors, I guess, and those pieces for women, or your Oscar de la Renta, like yeah. a man making pieces for women, but it's never really the flip. So, I'm definitely in the So my question for you is, why do you do all of this? I make people think. I'm sorry. Because yeah. life is bigger than just working 40 hours a week and then for 40 years and then like just die. There's more to life than just paying bills and dying. I want to. I don't want to be in that cycle. I want to constantly be in a position where I'm creative and I'm creating something that's of value. 
people while you're creating something of this value with your new EP that's out. Yeah. What do you plan on doing with them this next few months with it? The next few months is basically, it's just going to be about physically going to where I need to go to as far as like performing again in front, in front of people and definitely in front of like new people. Because I've performed like around my way, I've, I feel like I've performed enough around my way to a point where people have come to enough of my shows to feel like, I, I don't think they really, I don't want to say they don't want to go, but they don't necessarily need to go because they've been to enough where it's just like, you know, I'll, I'll catch you next time, I'll catch you next time. I want to branch out into new markets, be in front of new people, and expand like my fan base. So with that, I have to go outside of my comfort zone and go to like different open mics of different circles, because there's just so many different circles in the, like, the indie music scene. It's, it's almost ridiculous. My EP is a collection of just like these love songs, well these love poems that turned into songs that I've been writing for probably around the time that I started playing guitar. So three years ago. Yeah, like three, four years ago. And as I've gotten better with playing guitar, I would constantly go back and like squeak them. You know, it's, it's almost like you, ne you can never feel like something's like complete or perfect. So it's a collection of like these like love songs inspired by situationships. And are you in a situation currently? Nah. Alright man, alright guys, she's single, call on that six four six 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 seven seven two two did a win a day when that bikini gold. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they, they were just inspired by situationships. I there's at least one song on there I wrote. That wasn't really inspired by anything. I think I was just actually drunk, and it was you know that one night. I was like, let's just see what I can come up with. But for the most part, it was always inspired by situationships, and then the the title track, which everybody apparently seems to like cry when they listen to it, because it's just me talking, and it just kind of reflected like why is it that I'm always in these situationships, you know? But I mean, that's a good question. Why are many people in this situation? Because it's, it's deeper than what it's, it's kind of like an iceberg. It's just like, your problems are just, like, there's, it's just a shit that you see on the surface. Like, it goes deeper than just like, oh, you won't answer my text and this and the third. You know? You, I mean, I've gotten to the point now where mm -hmm. if he doesn't answer my text, I'd be like, well, who the fuck cares? I'm going to sleep. Yeah. You know, in the end of the day, it's like I think we've become so focused on if we're gonna have someone yeah. to call us. Mm -hmm. Do I care? I care for the affection, I care for all of that. Mm -hmm. But at its own time, when it happens. Yeah. You know, today's society is too focused on am I gonna get a boyfriend or am I gonna get a girlfriend or am I gonna get married? I feel like we're focused on that because it's, for some people, it's just that difficult to come across. It's just like, okay, I'll wait, but then after a while, you might just feel like, damn, I've been waiting a really long time. But why, why search for it, in a way? Like, even if you're thinking about it, you're still kind of, in a way, searching for it. Yeah, but I think that's natural, that's natural human nature, don't you think? To, like, want to be loved and accepted. I of course. Of everything. No, and of course. Yeah. It's, everyone wants to be loved and accepted, but yeah. you're not going to also go crazy speak it. Like, yeah, for some people, they do. Like, you know. like I, I'll admit, I've gone on dating sites. Yeah. Everyone has. Yeah, you, you can't tell me. You have to be so stuck up to not have gone. At least one good time, like during that one bad breakup. Like, you know what, I'm getting back out there. See, I can tell you what. nap. I can tell you a funny story. Yeah. Broke my arm. Yeah. Almost died. Wow. My boyfriend broke up with me while I was in the hospital. Oh. Mind you, because the morphine was so mm -hmm. much in my system, I yeah. gained something completely inappropriate mm -hmm. to him and had him thrown out. Wow. Don't remember much of it. Mm. 
my friends and my sister laughed at me like crazy though. They said it was the best moment I ever had in high. Wow, okay. Still don't know the whole thing. But um I go home a day or two later. Yeah. The morphine was still in the system so I was knocked out for days. Yeah. And I look at my phone mm-hmm. and there's all these okay cupid messages. And the last time I checked, I didn't make an okay cupid account. Okay. So I go and I see it and I see pictures I don't remember taking like for little club nights that you don't remember going on um, Wow. And I see well this is so and so making a profile for my best friend because her ex boyfriend is a piece of garbage. And Mind you, my best friend is passed out next to me. I'm like, wow. What were you doing while I was out? <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I set you up for online date. I'm like, I can't move for three months. <laughs> Where am I going to go? Yeah. How's that supposed to work out? Like, how is this supposed to work out? Did it work out? No, I was in a bed for three months. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, never know. I mean, I tried it. I got bored. Yeah. It was just yeah. really quick. Some people like get super clingy and then yeah. it's like, oh my god, like, can you marry me? And I'm like, no. Online dating has become almost like, like shopping. Yeah, you especially because like you're almost shopping. They, they emulate Tinder and everything so much yeah. that it just becomes a chore. Yeah. So I'm just like, well, if I wanted that, then I would have had my family try to marry me off already. Pretty much. But enough about that, because we could go and talk too many stories about social media. Yeah. Even though you could say one of your own. Oh, my social media? Mm-hmm. Oh, Nefertiti. No, I meant a story about your social media. <laughs> like, that was a good one, though. I was like dropping handles real quick. Um. Dang, good online stories. I mean, I guess the best one was my most recent situation from last year. It was just one of those things where you were friends on Facebook, but you don't remember why or how. Yeah. It's been that long. But uh, he was like a local musician. Well, he was a rapper. He was a rapper. Okay. And then, like 99% of the people. Yeah, like 99% of the time. Is, uh, he was a rapper. And I just thought he was really cute. And I made him slide into my DMs. How did, wait, wait, wait. How do you make somebody <laughs> slide into your DMs? Listen, there's a formula to this. Like, you like, you have to like a certain number of pictures. Okay. Right? You have to like a certain number of uh, statuses. You gotta post up some emojis. You gotta put up some comments. Like, there's a formula to this. You ever go on your Instagram and you have, like, that one person that will just like, like, 50,000 pictures? Yeah. So you were that person? Well, I didn't, I wouldn't do that. But if somebody does do that, I want you. It's, it's, it's fact. I mean, yeah, that's a... Wait, like, I mean, like, you'll see them like pictures from, like, 75 weeks ago. Like, you know, like, it's real. Like, it's a formula. So, that's basically what I did, but that was on Facebook. So, like, every time he posted, I would just comment. I was, I would, like, participate in the comment section, but most of the time I really just didn't give a shit. Just wanted to get his attention, and it worked. It genuinely worked. Because he slid in my DM and he was like, yo, you sexy. I'm like, I hey, got him. Got him. Um, it worked. It works. I swear to God it works. But that's dead now. I, I blocked him like three weeks ago. Damn. Yeah, that is dead. dead. All of that work just so you could block him. You heard, yo. That shit is dead. I was just like, yo, I cannot deal with these rappers anymore. Try not to. Damn, man, but it's never game up. Yo, for real. It was like, as much as I say, like, oh, I'm not dealing with no rappers anymore. Let somebody come through with, like, the illest flow. I'm just sitting there like, ooh. Ooh, wow, his flow, his cadences. Wow, those punchlines. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he looked good, too. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop it, girl. <laughs> stop it. You're about to get some trouble. Word. Hope my rappers about to start adding us. I know. At me, nefertiti.gold. And now she's gonna shame when she called herself. N E F E R T I T I dot G O L D. Where'd that come from? You just thought you were like a 
an Egyptian princess because you do look beautiful, but thank you. Well, Nefertiti is my government name. Okay. And the gold portion came out of well, first of all, it fits, you know, regal royalty gold, but then at the same time, it's also for marketing and branding purposes. Because like you can go online and search Nefertiti, but you will mostly find the Queen of Egypt. Like finding me specifically in the music before I actually blow up is extremely difficult. So I know. Yeah. I did my research. So I had to add in that that goal just to at least kind of break through like on the Google search bar somehow. I was told that I should probably try to change my name to just Nepati. But then I was just like no, because at the end of the day, you could look it up, but it's not gonna reach. You could increase your your SEO, yeah, and then you'll be able to be searched more. Yeah, when I looked you up, I saw a lot of actual Nefertiti pieces. Yeah, a lot of Nefertiti gold jewelry. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, for me, I was just like, well, if. Uh, XXX Tentacion can be in a position where the nation knows how to say his name. You can say that as a goal. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. yeah, I know. I it took me a while. I just call him like I just tend to call him I just call him Triple X. Yeah, but it's just like he was on. He was on. He was a what, part of freshman class, and it's just like yeah. if he can go that far into his career, not with a complicated name as that. I can keep that for TV gold. Yeah. You know? That was my rationale. I was like, I'm not changing it. Like, there's people with way more complicated stage names than mine. And it's a nice Complicated name. spellings. And still, remember the final branding, so. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, before we have you play your talk for us. Yes, yeah, sir. Tell us about, let's see what you, your symphony, Superhero Love. Um, that was, that was a poem from, like, I don't even know what year I came across one of my old, old journals and I saw the original poem compared to like the song lyrics that I have now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there was a lot of progression and rewriting of that. But that was, that was a poem that I had and I was just like at a point where I just needed to write a song. I want to write a song, I want to write a song. So I was just kind of sifting through what I had written to see like what can I morph into to be something that's like an original track that's mine that I can play when I want to perform. Yeah. And that's really how that came along and personally it's just it's one of my favorite songs. It's one of I feel it's one of the best songs that I've written compared to where I've started to where I am now. But I think it's one of my better written songs. So that's really like the origin of it. It was just kind of like out of desperation of like, you know, It's like when I was first starting to uh, learn guitar and instead of playing like the super basic chords like when you're learning and Mary had a little lamb. You know, like I just wanted, I was I was just so done with it. I'm just like, I want something that's mine. Yeah, you, you know, you can keep things like dun 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 like on the yeah. down the E the E chord is not I don't even listen, I play guitar and I, I kinda still don't know how to play guitar. Okay, so how about you introduce that for us? Uh, Superhero Love. It's on my EP. It would have all been different, which is available on all streaming platforms of your choice. And, you know, get me feels. Get me feels, you know? I like Sit back, reflect, feel good. Be the distribution of 